Hey, it's Dave. Uh, March 5th out here at the property. Okay. If you notice, I'm trying to get out here two times a week, especially during this this time of the year. Or, uh, you know, it's still winter and I can work on these uh, clearing things. And so, uh, this is actually, this will be part five of clearing or expanding the food plot. And pretty, pretty extensive expansion. You should uh, get, get the last section wiped out today. So, let me turn around and show you real quick where we're going. All right, so, we gotta go. down to, so from this tree, down the hill to that marker right there. And you can barely see it because all the brush, but from there, so we got this, this stump here to get out, which is thick and nasty. And then around here, You can see from that tree line and into this tree. So that's the corner. So it's you know it's this junk here we gotta get out. So let's jump on that first thing and then we'll work on the bigger trees. Getting those down one by one. But uh, everything's got a lean to it and a direction they seem to want to fall. So we try to help them out with that. I'm pretty indifferent to which way they fall as long as they go down. So that's, that would be my preference that they fall down and not on me. So I decided to leave these two up, these two little trees because it has this little pond right there. And so if you don't know, you move leave the side. It creates like a little pond in here when it rains. And so it just was really cool looking there. Anyway, I thought I'd leave it, at least for the first year or so. Not hurt nothing. That beech tree is a corner, it stays. And this beech tree in the middle stays, but pretty much everything else stays. The reason why I'm saving the beech trees is because deer will eat the beech nuts. So they're a natural attractant for deer, so that will help. I did cut one down, it was a smaller one, but it was competing for the bigger one, so they didn't need to be that close. So, and they're really slow growth. So the fact we have one that big, is, that's good. So hopefully it'll stay productive. Cooler day, so let me get hopping and we'll go from there. Dave out. Hey, it's Dave. So I'm gonna get a little commentary on the tree cutting I did the other day. So you guys saw these trees go down. Unfortunately, I don't have the cameras to get in here and give you a good look at what I was doing when I was doing it. And I'm not a tree expert. I'm just an average guy. But there are tree experts out there. And so um, I'll put those in um, two good references um, for you to look at for you know tips on how to cut a tree. But anyways, what I do and um, can't remember who said it, but one said, and I agree with this, whatever style you choose, make it yours and that's what you use. So anyways, I use a Humboldt, which is the wedge as the angle at the bottom. So you can see Humboldt as that. And then this, you know, it come in, you come in straight and then the angle at the bottom. Reason why you do that, it's considered a bit safer in, especially out here on an incline then the conventional, which is you would come in you know, straight and then you'd have the wedge, you know, protrude up. So the wedge is in the log versus the wedge is in the stump here. So um, anyways, like I was saying, it's a, it's a bit safer. The, the concept with the Humboldt is that when you uh, fell the tree, it's uh, highly unlikely the tree is going to push back across the stump at you, which is a good thing because it's a lot of weight going down and you're not really quite sure how all those branches are going to react. So that's what I do. And you can see, 
so angle straight cut here and then you come in a little bit higher than your straight cut and then you get a that's your it's called your hinge so you get your hinge there so i can stay back that's my goal i'm very fearful when i cut down trees because um, they're very dangerous it's a lot of weight um, coming down and so and i'm out here by myself when i do cut trees I always let my wife know that today i'm cutting down heavy trees to to send somebody out to check on me if i don't show up on time because there's nothing worse than being the feller out in the woods pinned underneath the tree and can't get out and who knows what happens to you but um and that happens and so that's why i very cautious but anyways that's what i use so there's an there's a correct one so that one i did correctly i'm gonna walk over here and show one that i messed up a little bit and why it was more difficult to cut so you remember this one i had a much harder time getting it to fall and it was so i had the same same cut right so did the humboldt so i had my and my wedge did that fine, but look at my back cut. See, look, I came in too low. And so it made the hinge kind of awkward. I should have been like right here. If I had been up here, you know, I think it would have fell over much easily. Instead, it was like kind of hanging up there and just sitting straight. It wanted to go. It kept creaking like it was going, sounding like it was going, but it just went go. And that's why you see me pushing on it hard at the end there. And finally, that's what it made it good. And it's a good thing it's a small And then uh, I always cut it high in the stump uh, because I'll come back and trim down the stump to the level I want like I did these. I mean, it's easy enough to come back in. commentary here this one was really high on the stump that I cut it because it had this it had rot in the middle and I didn't know how much see the hole there so it introduced rot and you look the rot's here through this crack and when you pounded it with an axe it sounded hollow. So I went up to the point where it wasn't hollow and that's where I did my work.
Eighth day. Well, what a day. Busy one. Got a lot done. I pooped out. So take a minute. We're going to shoot some distances to see what kind of area we got now for the food plot. All right, so I did some uh, ciphering. And uh, roughly, I shot different areas to get the distance. And it varies, but to roughly it's 31 yards by 41 yards, roughly. Some areas a little bigger, some areas a little smaller, but I think that, that'll do. And if you calculate that, it's 1,271 square yards, which is 0.26 something of an acre. So I think at the end of last year, the food plot was 0.18 of an acre, and now we're 0.26. So we had a pretty good bit. And, uh, and we gave it a lot of, um, a lot more light. The, uh, the canopy, especially when you get into the food plot that I did last year, now it's really open. So, uh, 
should uh, sun should bode well on it and should grow better so I think I think uh, I think we done good all right let me paint around real quick so you can see what we did of course if you watch the rest of the video you already know but in case you didn't yeah, we took down five larger trees well four larger trees a bit of a challenge but they all went down the way I want it direction I want it and so I feel good about that I just gotta finish on the, sh the brush out I got about a third of it out look how firm firm it's huge that's what I want it'll uh, compact down look what it did last year those used to be about two times as high as what they are Know this compact down and slowly become dirt, which is good. So I want. Takes a couple years. So we'll put those branches all over up on top of that. And uh, that'll be it. Alright, like I always say, remember to think kindness your business. If you do that, things uh, um, I don't know, things usually turn more positive, I guess, is the right way to say it. I mean, when, when kindness is shown towards you, I think you have a positive reaction to it. I think when you share kindness, the recipient has a positive reaction, as do you doing it. So, anyways, that's what I would say today about.